the manner in which we have been you know practicing uh, democracy uh, not in, only in the field of politics but also as a way of life and therefore uh, it gives us a cheer to all of us and uh, when dr jayshree talked to me about uh, delivering a speech i was wondering as to how i should initiate the discussion and i asked her to give me the uh, subjects of the various speakers so that i could formulate my own you know plan of uh, discourse and uh, say something about uh, the importance of uh, democracy in the present global world and then i i i thought that probably it would be better in the fitness of things to talk about something general because uh, other uh, free subjects uh, more specialized ones particularly human rights and other legal aspects related to democracy and certain other areas uh, in the behavior and practice of democracy are going to be discussed by other uh, speakers this evening so i thought i should talk something about uh, democracy and its challenges democracy as you all know uh, is a very uh, you know is a universal world uh, everybody has his own uh, every 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 country every nation every scholar every theorist has evolved his own way of uh, you know defining democracy somewhere when i was growing up uh, i i heard uh, a very interesting def uh, definition of democracy uh, so it said democracy is like a cap that has been worn by so many people in so many ways that has that it has lost its shape but the common principle which unites all these theorists and all these scholars uh, is the concept of the people's participation it is the people who are uh, at the center their voice is at the center and uh, their participation is at the center and they have an important role to play in the in the governance of their own uh, country Uh, their own nation and their own uh, mm, affairs of of life uh, be it so social be it political be it economic so uh, in that sense uh, democracy uh, has been practiced uh, has is being practiced uh, in the world uh, for a very very long time and the experiment of democracy uh, as as i speak today and as we celebrate this international day i am happy to tell you that nearly 3/4 of the world 75% of the world uh, world's uh, nations they practice democracy in one form or the other the processes may vary uh, the form may vary but uh, we have uh, the people's uh, involvement in the helm of uh, uh, affairs uh, in the governance of their own uh, countries so that that is something uh, to be felt uh, uh, you know ch uh, cheering about and uh, but we still have a long way to go uh, you can as as i said there are still one fourth of, of the world which is uh, where people are being denied this this right and uh, and even where it is being practiced uh, it is it is uh, uh, facing a lot of challenges and a lot of um, problems but i'll come to that a little later and how uh, uh, particularly in our country how we have uh, um, uh, journeyed with this uh, you know rendezvous as i would call with democracy uh, for these 75 years but uh, to that a little later now the when we go when we go a little deeper into the historical perspective we find that uh, the modern day democracy as we uh, see it as and as we call it and as we understand it uh, came to uh, with the with the beginning of say uh, with uh, what was what was known as in 12 AD, the Magna Carta. From there on, the modern beginnings of democracy is traced by the Western uh, political scientists and and theorists. It took a long day, a long uh, time. You can see uh, we are sitting in the third decade of the twenty first century, and yet the experiment of democracy is 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 going on. In between, we have had very very epoch -ma epoch making events. Uh, you know, in the in the sixteenth century, in the seventeenth century of the, the the French Revolution, then we had the American independence in seventeen seventy six, July four, and then we had you know different charters 
charter bills which guaranteed franchise uh, uh, in different stages to the british people uh, to uh, england which is supposed to be the seat of democracy and you know you have uh, we uh, those those, are, those of you of students for political science and history would recall the charters of 1832 1867 and 1903 and how you know england took a long long time time to grant universal franchise to uh, to its citizens it, it it speaks volumes about uh, the you know our constitution makers and our uh, uh, you know pioneers uh, who uh, gave universal franchise with one stroke uh, i mean with the very first elections in 1950 51 all the men and all the women uh, they got the right to right to vote and it has been going on and uh, about 20 25 years before even the uh, the voting age was lowered to 18 so that speaks uh, about the success uh, that we have achieved in terms of uh, the democratic process uh, of course there are there are uh, as i said uh, question marks on that there are problems on that but all in all uh, as far as uh, our agreement uh, with democracy is concerned we we can be considered considered as a great success story uh you see and then uh, you see uh, but i say that uh, the uh, the the word democracy doesn't even doesn't remain confined to the domain of politics or uh, politics alone uh, it, it, it is incomplete uh, the idea of equality has to be not only in political terms it has to got to be extended to the social and economic terms we uh, freedom has got no meaning uh, if it is not coupled with social and economic uh, freedom and empowerment so that is Uh, these are the the uh, the um, concomitants that are very essential uh, to come with the idea of political freedom and in that sense we have yet to go a long way although we have achieved a lot in terms of uh, empowering not only the, um, the the urban people but we the rural people also ever since the panchayat uh, bills were passed uh, in 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 80s and Uh, down to the uh, grassroots level at the village level the rural people were empowered uh, but uh, even there uh, we find that the benefits of this empowerment are not being percolated uh, uh, to uh, the last uh, people as we call the, in, in the, in the lowest of the low and uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, working for uh, for their welfare programs or uh, you know alleviating their levels of income and alleviating their poverty so that is uh, that is that is still going on but uh, but we are we uh, we can say that uh, with uh, we are a world uh, you know we are a country with about 135 million you know crore people and uh, we are the most populous democracy in the country uh, and uh, of course we are becoming a mature democracy evolving by the day now that is uh, that is a historical and uh, a little contemporary perspective of the whole idea of uh, democracy uh, uh, as we understand Uh, till the present times but i would also draw your attention to certain ideas that are inherent in the uh, in the functioning of democracy when we when we uh, when, when i when i utter the word democracy when we talk about the uh, the electoral system we we talk about the electoral pro process we we try to uh, you know assume the fact that uh, people Uh, who participate in the democratic democratic process uh, uh, you know uh, everyone's voice is heard and everyone is given the chance to express or air his views uh, whether at the panchayat level or in the state legislature or in the parliament but we find that even but this system is in many cases not being followed in letter and spirit uh, there are certain uh, lobbies there are certain uh, pressure groups 
uh, 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 which are there and which which hamper uh, the growth of these voices. Of course, we we have evolved the uh, the system of checks checks and balances, which is which is uh, uh, so essential uh, to the functioning of any democratic form of government. Uh, these checks and balances are in the form of uh, the various various institutions, and it is expected of uh, those people who are at the helm of affairs to uh, lend all these institutions a certain level of accountability and transparency. And herein lies the biggest challenge to democracy nowadays. Once you know people uh, are uh, they, they acquire the seeds of political power. Probably, as the saying goes, uh, you know, power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, there have been examples. But still, we have programs, we have uh, uh, the programs to elevate uh, the, the lowest of the low, and we have, the, we have programs to alleviate the... Uh, 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 uplift the weaker sections of the society to provide basic amenities like health and education and 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 uh, you know this is this is uh, going on but uh, the biggest challenge nowadays uh, if you confine ourselves to say our own immediate context we would find that a lot of corruption has creeped into it i'm drawing your attention to the role of money power and how the the role of money power is able to thwart the whole process how it it perpetuates certain uh, certain uh, cliques uh, certain people certain groups uh, to further their political vested interests uh, and and it it, it percolates uh, gets disseminated in the in the economic structure of the people these days we talk about a, a kind of nexus between the uh, uh, the politicians, uh, the, the the bureaucrats, uh, the corporates, and even the criminals. Look at look at uh, if you if you look at the data of uh, uh, the, the parliamentarians, how many of them uh, have have their, have a criminal record? How many of them have cases pending against them in uh, in, in in various ca uh, uh, cases all across the country? Very recently, the Supreme Court said that we should we should exp expedite these cases, so that people, you know, it, it sets an example uh, before the, uh, the, the the public that people who are uh, governing us actually have a clean record. It's very ironical that uh, the, the intelligentsia, the educated people, uh, very few of them join politics. The question is, why do the intelligentsia and the educated people not join politics? Perhaps, uh, uh, as I was growing up, I heard, uh, you know, the oft-quoted saying, politics is the last refuge of a scoundrel. And, you know, people shy from this, the whole, the whole process is, is so, uh, so, becomes so, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it deters good people from entering. People say it, it is some kind of a muck. Politics should attract the best minds. Why is it the best minds go out of this country and they, they join other professions even within the country and not join politics? That is a very, very, the biggest challenge of the times. And perhaps uh, keeping all these facts in mind, how the, uh, the, the, the very institutions, uh, they, are, they are being thwarted, uh, how... Um, uh, the nexus of criminals and um, corporates and uh, politicians and bureaucrats, uh, how it is playing havoc with the system, how they are subverting the policies. And therefore, the policy and uh, at the root cause of, let us, let us try to understand how, in spite of uh, the very good things that have uh, come about uh, in the last few decades in terms of economic and social development of the country and we are being uplifted from a st the status of developing country to a developed nation. But these are actually the, the hurdles that, is, that are, that, that are you know, impeding our, our, our whole process. And, and, and therefore we have, to, we have to fight this challenge. 
we, 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 we talk about gender equality. But truly speaking, right from the panchayat level to various legislatures at the state and the, and the, and the, and the central level, how much representation is being given to women? That is a biggest challenge. We have been talking about it. But the, the, uh, the, the bills empowering the uh, uh, women, giving them uh, some, something beyond one third or uh, gi giving an equal status of 50 percent, it has not been cleared by any legislature. That is, that, is, that, is, that is the kind of, that's a very ironical kind of situation that we are in. And this whole uh, process uh, has to uh, uh, work in a very transparent manner. When I talk about transparency and when I was talking about the role of money, uh, you see, when, you, when, when, a, when a president uh, contests, when a, when a presidential nominee is contesting an uh, election in America, you can access the internet and you can find that how much money has been sent to the last uh, cent to the last paisa. You, 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 that is accountable. So that is the kind of, uh, uh, you see, uh, transparency, mature democracy have, and we should also have that. Why not? We are, we, we are I mean, thanks to the, to the fact that we have now electronic voting machine, uh, the, the era of booth capturing is over. And uh, the era of uh, violence and all those things that went with it. By and large, we have been having fair and uh, free elections. That, that is there. But, uh, uh, you know how, uh, we have to be very transparent in our functioning. And we have to uh, uh, enable good people to join politics. So, uh, so that the whole process, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, gets that kind of momentum that is uh, needed uh, for us to, uh, you know, rank as one of the best or top countries of the world. Opportunities for us. It is knocking at us the, at our at our doors, and only a few things remain to be to be addressed. And therefore, I think. Uh, one of the ways, or uh, one more thing that uh, I would like to uh, talk about, or uh, I would like to say regarding this. Uh, only yesterday, I read the the, the uh, I was reading a news item in Danny Baskar, and I found uh, it was quite a good event uh, being which was organized by uh, the Rajasthan Assembly, where you know the Commonwealth uh, uh, speakers were there. Uh, he, they had assembled to, uh, to express uh, something about uh, the uh, legislature and the policies. And so, uh, where, and one of the important uh, points made in that summit or in that conference was that until and unless we are able to improve our educational system or spread education Awareness through education. Democracy will continue to suffer at the hands of people who manipulate the castes and communities to their advantage. So people have to be educated enough that it is their right to franchise. And the, the right to franchise, the right to vote, comes with that res responsibility for, for them when they are participating in that process once in five years. It is not just that, you know, money power play uh, purchases their vote and they go to the bowling booth and, and they cast their vote. Our block caste wise and our block community wise. They, 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 ha they have to be responsible in the sense what I am voting, voting for. Will, will it give me social empowerment? Will it give me economic empowerment? Will it frame policies for me, which will have a long-term effect, not only for this generation, for the for my generations to come? And in turn, it will make those who are elected accountable and responsible. They will have to be made accountable long before Long back, I read when as a student of uh, graduation, I mean, I, in 1978, I read 
uh, the autobiography of, uh, uh, say, um, late Sri Jayaprakash Narayan, uh, who, who was himself, you know, a champion of uh, democracy and everybody knows how what role he played during the emergency and how he united and uh, was able to, uh, uh, you know, throw away or get the people rid of one of the dark chapters of uh, Indian democracy. In his book, Prison Diary, he has mentioned one thing, a very important thing. Suppose a representative, if he is not able to work according to the wishes of the people, according to the promises that he has made to his electorate, there has to be a vision in our policies to recall the representative. So the right to recall, we have a right to recall our representative. He is, if, he, if he is not live up to the expectation, we have to, uh, the, the people have to rise to bring him back and replace him with another one. So if that kind of fear is there, that kind of sense of accountability is there, that kind of sense of responsibility is there, probably uh, the, 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 the erring uh, politicians uh, will be, you know, will think uh, twice before, uh, you know, uh, going uh, away uh, from the promised path. Another thing that, that, you know, comes to my mind, one, one other thing I said, education through awareness. Another thing, another important aspect of democracy uh, that has, uh, uh, you know, yes. that comes to my mind uh, is that uh, in democracy, uh, you have not only to express your views, but you should be patient and tolerant enough to listen to others' views. I'm talking about the right to dissent, the right to protest, the right to differ. Right to dissent is the essence of democracy. And it's, it's natural for anyone who is uh, at the helm of affairs to, to suppress these kinds of voices. But, you see, history of our own parliamentarians in the last so many decades suggests then, you know, they respected what is, what we, we, we say, mat bhed, but not man bhed. When it came to, it is only just an expression of the difference of opinion, the difference of point of view. I recall and all of you must have seen uh, that video which is circulated on our WhatsApp most of the time. Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, our late Prime Minister and a great statesman, making his, you know, one of the most remarkable speeches in his political uh, career uh, of paying tribute uh, to late Pandit Nehru on his death and you know that speak that spoke volumes about how how they respected each other how how, how they they they, they <coughs> sorry transcended those political bounds and appreciated each other in spite of difference of opinion on certain aspects as human beings, as Democrats, as essential Democrats, they had respect for each other's views. And, and that speak, uh, speech, those of you who have heard and those of you who have not heard, please go back to that. And you will find the, the true parliamentarian in him, the true Democrat in him, you know, rising to the occasion and speaking something that every one of us or all succeeding generations of leaders, they have, they should emulate. Only yesterday, 
I was referring to the same article that appeared in Danik Bhaskar regarding the uh, Commonwealth summit that took place in Rajasthan Assembly. We, I had on the front, front page, you must have seen the interviews of two political leaders, uh, Mr. Nitin Gadgari and Mr. Gulam Nabi Azad. And in those interviews, they said how, how, how they were able to reach out to the people. Gulam Nabi Azad was, you know, uh, he, he would reach out to, he had great appreciation for uh, late Sri Bharat Singh Shekhawat. They both belonged to different dispensations and yet they had appreciation for each other. So this kind of respect for the opposing party, for the opposing views has to be there and which these days somehow is, is uh, lacking and, and People, if, if you are a true democrat, if you, are, if you, if you cherish that, that value, definitely you would, you would not feel shy of appreciating the opponent's point of view. So that, that, that point is, is, is a very important uh, point that I, I, I wish to make here. Now, these days, you know, people say that uh, democracy has been, you know, we have been able to uh, the age of internet and uh, social media uh, uh, booms, uh, they constitute an opportunity for democracy. But it also contains certain hazards in terms of propaganda, in, in terms of working as a propaganda tool, in terms of, uh, you know, undermining the whole project, especially when we have fake news where we are, and uh, we are living in an age of post-truth. I mean, uh, I think uh, uh, we, we need another kind of confidence, for another kind of... Uh, we, 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 we want uh, to, uh, you know, we need another conference to debate on this, but of course, it, it, it serves as, as, as a medium, but we have to be aware of its dangers also. Now, I have been asked to, uh, by the organizer to limit my time and I, I could have gone on and on in, in, in my sway. But uh, the last point that, uh, with, uh, with which I, I would like to wind up, in fact, is about the value of being a democrat. You see, democracy to me is, becomes a cherished value when I and able to practice it, practice, it, practice it and inculcate it amongst my students, among my children, in my behavior and conduct. Not only when I participate in the election process, but in my day-to-day -day affairs and in my profession, I have to be democratic enough. It should be a conviction. It should be a value. And mind you, to practice it ideally, it is, it is not so easy, but again I said, with patience and tolerance and the power to listen, you can become a, demo a democrat. And we cannot take democracy for granted, we have to work for it. We have to be responsible and we have to make our representative responsible. And I, I, I thank everybody that uh, you gave me the opportunity. Uh, last sentence that I wish to say and wind up my discussion uh, is, uh, would be that democracy is a way of life. We have to continue to practice it and only then we would be able to celebrate in a bigger way, in a much more joyous way in the years and decades to come. Thank you for giving me the opportunity and Lord God bless you all and I look forward to a more, you know, uh, enlightening discussion in the, uh, you know, as we uh, proceed with this uh, webinar. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, sir, for setting the right tone. Indeed, um, coexistence is really a challenge for all. Uh, right from the, the, when the civilizations have come into existence. The coexistence is the main motto 
how to be with all together and have fellowship goodwill comradeship indeed these are basically the power uh, you may say obstructions also because uh, if coexistence is challenged means democracy is challenged and you have set the right tone for all the continue uh, the speakers that would be in sequence uh, i would be inviting sir please do remain there as you have to uh, in between maybe now i will not uh, be there for uh, uh, commenting anything uh, so please sir be there uh, to uh, give your remarks miss prema priyadarshini the advocate lawyer and mediator counselor dealing the honorable supreme court and the high court uh, uh, in new delhi and i invite her to take the platform and deliver her lecture thank you jashri ma'am good evening to all of you i am extremely happy today to celebrate international democracy day this year theme is national awareness so i will come without taking any more time i will come to the topic which is uh, democracy under lockdown i will be speaking on this topic so as all of you are aware of this covid 19 pandemic which has fueled a crisis for democracy around the world since the corona virus outbreak began the condition of democracy is and human rights both has grown worse in the countries all around globally so not only in india but we see that the impact is felt in the all around in all the countries the governments have responded by engaging in abuse of power silencing their critics and weakening or shattering important institutions often undermining the very system of accountability needed to protect public health so this uh, pandemic has given already given those uh, governments an excuse to uh, uh, perpetrate violence against civil uh, civilians detain people without justification over and they have overstepped their legal authority by using the pandemic as a justification to grant special powers so governments and societies have continued to use marginalized marginalized group as scapegoats blaming them for spreading the virus without naming the religion you all of you must be aware that in india also in the first wave a particular religion was uh, blamed for being a super spreader here and there was vicious hate campaign against that religion which we now understand but in the first wave we all of us had been in in that under that uh, impression so the corona virus was an uh, was used as an excuse for the already oppressive government to do things that it has long planned to do but had not been able to do so this is uh, this is how it has unflow uh, how it has impacted the democracy globally india as you know that uh, in the last month on 15th august india celebrated its 75th independence day at the tail end of the second wave of covid-19 that has wrecked our country it has been long year of disease lockdowns curfews graded relaxations the pandemic has been a life changing even to all of us it denied us the freedom of choice and introduced stringent restrictions on work education travel social activity the meaning of democracy has not changed the way we appreciate democracy has we need more kindness and empathy we also need to find ways to help each other so that we see light again major lesson of covid 19 crisis for india is to take deliberation and accountability seriously india continues to pay a heavy price for absence of a comprehensive legislation and effective enforce enforcement mechanism it is imperative to ensure that the roll back on regulatory systems such as parliamentary deliberations judicial check on the executive lack of consultations in law making process is discouraged the government must recognize the significance of transparency in governance and initiate measures to restore the trust of the public informal norms are equally significant 
such as public consultations and dialogues, respect for opposition and tolerance for dissent. The judiciary will need to do substantial work in hearing and effectively disposing cases where personal liberty as is at stake. As all of you know, what is the pace of disposal of the cases in India and all the litigants across Pan-India are suffering because it is overloaded with the case and due to the lockdown, we were almost shut for one and a half years, although the courts were hearing urgent matters virtually, but uh, many litigants, they are still suffering. It's a very sorry state today also of, uh, of the disposal of the pending cases. Looking ahead, all dom domestic and transnational actors concerned with democracy's future must closely monitor and monitor the wide-ranging, fast-moving political effects of the pandemic, rapidly devise responses to lessen potential harm, and seize any positive opportunities the crisis may present. Coming soon is a second, perhaps even bigger wave of political disruptions that will be caused by the unfolding global economic crisis potentially devastating increase in economic inequality, unemployment, debt, and all these are far more serious issues than what the pandemic has done health-wise. All these uh, things which we will be experiencing for a long, long time after even pandemic has gone. The poverty as well as pressures on the stability of financial institutions will put enormous strains on governance systems of all types, irrespective it is whether democratic government or different type of government, all these types of strains will be faced equally in all the countries. After the global financial crisis, as we all know, that had erupted in the year 2008, few foresaw the very long tail of negative political consequences, which in the real state and even in the share markets, the people are still uh, uh, feeling the pinch of 2008 uh, economic. Yes, sir, Yet that crisis ultimately yes. ushered in the rise and spread of illiberal populism, fragmentation of party systems, and consolidation of several authoritarian regimes long after economic recovery was underway. Amid a new crisis, even more daunting in scale, there is a natural tendency of our governments and individuals alike to be consumed by the urgency of near-term domestic fallout from the pandemic. But just as the virus contagion respects no borders, its political effects will inevitably sweep across boundaries and continue to equal long after the health emergency has eased. Now is the time to get ready. We need to be positive, think beyond ourselves, and take care of our fellow beings with heartful sincerity. The living recent exam example is Afghanistan, where all of us has witnessed murder of democratically elected government by Taliban forces, which operates as an insurgent force. Democracy is suffering around the world, but the public's demand for it has not been extinguished. Now, coming back uh, to the theme also, I would like to, why, why do we, all of us across the borders, why we love International Day of Democracy? They are just briefly, I will touch that, why we, all of us want that democracy should be celebrated like today. Number one, it gives power to the people. So the democracy is powerful. Why? It is powerful because it gives a voice to its nation's citizen, enabling them to make changes as they see fit. One of the result of this form of government is that democratic changes create space for new economic theories to emerge, ultimately leading to a world of innovation and improvement. Second, it is based on change. A cornerstone of democratic society is that they have the power to make changes when necessary. In principle, if things are going well, citizens have the power to maintain status quo, 
but if things don't work out it's up to the people to throw out the old and bring into the new so these are the powers which is given to the people it is based on equality again democracy the founding doc document of democratic government put great emphasis on equality one person one vote no matter who you are or your situation in life while this idea has not always been constant or popular over the centuries equal rights under the law are central to democratic governments and what is the national awareness which the un has set this year theme of international day of democracy as national awareness awareness so the theme is that that uh, national co consciousness is a shared sense of national identity and a shared understanding that a people a group shares a common ethnic linguistic cultural background and nationalism requires a first a national consciousness the awareness of national community of a group of people or nation the states of awareness are also associated with the states of experience so that the structure represented in awareness is mirrored in the structure of experience so briefly i have touched i think basically my topic was democracy under lockdown which i really i was allotted 8 to 10 minutes i didn't want that i should be overlapping my time slot for other speakers time so i have briefly done that so uh, my bus the, the ending words of mine will be that that every person uh, every person to have a say in uh, deciding about the greater collective social world that is the most important thing of uh, our uh, of all of us coexisting together peacefully and with this pandemic raging us globally we should be more empathetic in our approach more uh, uh, we were always in the past but now the requirement is that we should be more more human being rather than getting structured in some concept or theory first of all we should be um, co existing together seeing uh, living together and also looking after the needs of other societies and communities wherever we are living in whatever country we are we have to be uh, very conscious of our efforts that all all of us should grow with the positive and healthy body as well as with very healthy mind because it has impacted the mind with the body so uh, these two things uh, are very important for a very happy life and uh, for happy existence so with that note i end my uh, today's discourse on this democracy under lo lockdown i think i have been able to fit it in that time slot by being brief thank you jashree ma'am for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak to this august gathering uh, and address the issues here thank you so much so may i request you to please if you can have a, any kind of remark or to pursue the discussion further i think uh, it would not need any further discussion and she's really right in uh, asserting the fact that uh, the pandemic became an occasion uh, to at some places to subvert the democratic process and uh, it also resulted in uh, hampering the economic process uh, whose results uh, we would see in the years to come and uh, well uh, the last statement i really admired about uh, how the body and the mind uh, they have to be uh, coalesced uh, for our um, happy existence as democratic human so thank you so much um, thank you sir uh, i'm sorry that our professor ujwal uh, kumar choudhury is somewhere stuck up in bombay in some fashion uh, exhibition and he has lost his mobile in the car and by chance when i have rung uh, to the in the to that mobile uh, the driver has picked up and he has been waiting for professor kumar ujwal for 3 hours outside the building but professor is invisible uh, and uh, he is that car driver has informed me that he is unable to link him so i'm so sorry uh, somewhere we are uh, missing him, going to miss him 
Now I invite uh, our next speaker, Dr. Uh, Pranjal Kumar Phukan. Is he there and the connected? Dr. Pranjal Kumar Phukan, are you there? So anyway, he might be, he might have, yeah, he is there, Dr. Pranjal Kumar, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. But I have some uh, problem of voice, uh, means uh, throat uh, infection was going on, as I told you earlier. So let me try to speak today. Uh, but uh, main, uh, maybe I may not be uh, continue for long. Uh, I may be, have a very short speech because of the infection, because I have I was suffering from uh, tonsillitis uh, since last three days. So today only mm -hmm. I have my voice uh, <coughs> revived. But, but, but uh, mm -hmm. um, keeping it apart, actually, uh, I'm thankful to ma'am uh, for, uh, JC ma'am for uh, inviting me to this uh, special occasions with, uh, uh, with all the esteemed speakers, um, renowned speakers, notable speakers, and I have uh, chosen the topic of uh, our transparent and supporting system for the underprivileged, <clears throat> underprivileged society of the uh, of the country, because democracy uh, is having a big role, to and it, and also it has done a lot uh, since we have seen for the last since 1947 that uh, because of this democracy, which is the largest democracy in the world, we are the we are the limelight and we are the actually. Are uh, the examples which have said to the world, the nations and world communities that through democracy we have, we can achieve a lot, provided we have the true spirit in achieving this. Related to the underprivileged, related to the uh, people who are uh, downtrodden, uh, who are uh, who are not uh, getting all the benefits in the society, these people the, the, these people can uh, come forward, can be made forward, can be developed. In these particular uh, situations, maybe may be like pandemic situations, maybe like uh, other situations, maybe like normal situations. Only democracy uh, can provide this total impetus to uh, to this to these uh, societies through having a very dedicated and well-supported institutions, support systems. Like in democracy, the very nice thing and good thing is that we we can do all the activities with the help of the government because democracy by it itself is of the people, by the people, and for the people. So obviously the government, the institutions, the population uh, are, are, the very, are, are the very big, uh, are the very big situations where we can have a, a developed process so that our, our underprivileged, our, our uh, disprivileged, women's uh, children's uh, and other the problems which are face facing in the society can be resolved and get supported and getting supported also it is not a new thing but it has to be strengthened so that democracy is basically can be uh, can be can be floated and can be can be sown into the world like in present situations in Afghanistan as you have, as you have seen uh, these situations can be controlled if a proper and if democracy in true spirit can uh, is basically being uphold there. So with this democracy, it slowly every country in the world comes to our, and now they are understanding also that without democracy, we cannot run the government effectively because it is one of the most effective mechanism uh, of government, uh, running the government. Otherwise, you, have to, you can see that like theoretical society or you can say the, uh, uh, you can see the like uh, society which have been controlled by the one ruler, does not, or you can say military regime okay, is not successful either in uh, either in Myanmar or in China or in those countries where democracy is not in full stage. So if the democracy if, is uh, is prevailing in any country in a full fledged form, that country is obviously going to get succeeded, is getting successful, and all its citizens across the across uh, the nations with any caste, creed, sect, or wh whatever the case may be, they will all will prevail. I mean, prevail and all will uh, get success in a very uh, particular manner with uh, all the uh, privileges they can they, that can be shared among them equally so uh, this is the basic thing and uh, now based on that only uh, it is being shown that democracy is the only way to uh, help the country develop with all its uh, necessary resources being uh, distributed equally among the poor 
and also among the underprivileged so that all all the all the citizens who are part of the democratic system are get benefited so uh, due to the my uh, medical issue actually i could not be uh, in a position to speak more but i will surely uh, share my uh, my two page uh, documents or two to three page documents based on these with some relevant examples and i'm extremely sorry uh, for the inconvenience caused to you uh, so with this again i am thankful to all the speakers uh, all the all the uh, listeners or all the audiences and especially to dr miss uh, um, madam for giving me this opportunity today so that at least uh, i tried uh, uh, to some of the points thank you once again thank you once again Oh yes, Paulo is there. Thank you, Doctor Pranjal Kumar Fukan sir. It's been a really uh, grateful pleasure to be with you here on this platform. You have given us uh, time, and you have uh, shown your spirit. the spirit to participate and not to uh, be always at a back uh, just putting the things in front and then missing it uh, finally i'll uh, just invite now simi katari you know you better to tell me that na we are having meeting simi katari are you there dr simi katari yes i am yes i'm here Please continue with your deliberation. Uh, first of all, I would like to really thank everybody for being here and celebrating uh, the Democratic Day. Thank you, Dr. Jeshri, for having me. I'm a new kid on the block. I'm a transplant from the U.S. Uh, I'm here because of my parents. Unfortunately, my mom passed away, and now I'm here with my father. I'm a I'm a behavioral scientist out of Berkeley. and i practice mentoring coaching training i'm also a professor at these schools like i am ross university uh whistling woods uh wellinger spj and etc i was a tenured professor at george washington post my phd from berkeley uh, i'm a us citizen which is also democratic and uh, i'm here now in india as as a overseas citizen of india uh associated with various in, uh, institutes as well as corporates in india as well as around the world so um democracy we are talking about democracy as a macro yes economics talks about democracy as a whole people coming together individual rights and at the same time you know equal opportunities at the same time it's masses of people but being a behavioral scientist talking by hearing the other speakers talk what is really required in this covid 2020 and beyond is a turn of the century a universal correction like every other every other century the turn of the century there comes a change there comes a revolution there comes a human revolution and i'm going to be talking about the optimization of human potential because it's the individual that makes the masses So I'm going to go into micro details, and as a behavioral scientist, I'm going to be talking about, you know, how do you optimize human potential? Because the time is now, within the COVID times, where we have, as Prema said, we have to be empathetic, we have to be compassionate, we have got to go the extra mile, we got to think out of the box, we have to adapt because we are woke up and we are here to stay. So having said that, I would like to add, and I would like to start this. uh this goes by saying everyone has inside of him a piece of good news the good news is that you don't have know how great you are you can be how much you can love what you can accomplish and what your potential is as anne frank said so the definition is of human potential is ultimately about the pursuit of individual excellence for the benefit of all that's democratic If I am a good human being, I'm going to impact my influ my environment. I'm going to impact the environment's environment, and thus the ripple effect. So traditionally, many people use the term, um, you know, human potential by you know 
optimizing spiritual development yes it's mind body soul at this point spirituality is a very big very very big equation the sq equation is very big at this point in time when everything has been challenged from social systems to learning systems to value systems to whatever systems there are there are challenged when this is properly examined or understood it boils down to being the best you can be for the common good for yourself for others it involves developing unrealized capabilities or capacity and going beyond self imposed limitations unconscious biases uh, blind spots patterns so basically what are we talking about we're talking about emotional awareness we're talking about emotional intelligence we're talking about understanding ourselves understanding others humans have continued to evolve throughout our existence developing mentally and physically to become smarter stronger and generally better in the world that seems to be progressing at an accelerated rate with a lot of challenges extraordinary human bodies and minds are continuing to push to their limits and beyond breaking world records and defying beliefs about our capabilities more than ever modern medicine technology continue to expand lifespan and co- conquer medical mal- maladies with all this we must ask ourselves is there a limit to human potential has our improvement stopped or slowed with scientific and technological advancement we are eventually be able to surpass our limitations and achieve the impossible and what will be the consequence that we will what we will do the human brain as a neuro behavior scientist says that it's so incredibly powerful it you know if you put it through an mri scan or any kind of genetic brain profiling through fingertips we only utilize 10% of our brains but actually every cell every neuron of our brain is truly active at every given point from brain to death and is adaptable versatile flexible so a true fundamental theory of the universe may exist but could not just to be hard for human brains to grasp just as a fish may be barely aware of the medium in which it lives and swims so does the microstructure of empty space could be far too complex for unaided human brains some aspects of reality a unified theory of physics or full understanding of consciousness might elude us simply because they are beyond human brain just as surely as einstein's ideas will baffle us even today so what is about overcoming limitations and really optimizing human potential a human body is like uh, assets and liabilities so throughout our process throughout our uh, life as a very qualified auditor or an accountant or a chartered accountant always minimizes their uh, liabilities and maximizes assets to have a favorable balance so we need to focus on our assets we need to become the best we can be of ourselves and humans have evolved today and uh, embraced our limitations we are more aware but because we keep pushing and adapting ignoring the limits imposed on us by our own minds and our bodies this hampers the progress what i want to say in a nutshell it is mind over matter fundamentally it's in the mind and the neurons that that fire together wire together it practice makes perfect so again and again overcoming human limitations so for example i'll give you a little example of um you know how do we you know overcome a certain habit that we have formed and hardwired over years to come for a micro level say for example we want to be the 5 am reading club of robin sharma and we are not morning people so what do we have to do what is the action plan our goal we got to have a smart goal that we have to be able to wake up at 5 am so what are the tools that require either somebody waking you up or alarm clocks or whatever it takes to get it done you wake up 
the first day. You have to force and motivate yourself and find motivational vision boards and people and accountability partner to keep you going to the 21st day. The 22nd day, a new neural pathway has been built. Thus, forming a new habit and changing the old behavior to make you a better human being because you're going to get up in the morning, you're going to get more disciplined, you're going to read, your mind, neurons are going to open up, your neural, your synapses are going to be shooting, you know, going berserk and you're going to be uh, becoming more mindful. So that is what is human optimization at a micro level. So when, so what is the possibilities? The possibilities are endless. It is N to the power of N. Basically, there are infinite opportun uh, uh, possibilities. As we are small microcosms of the universe, the power of the universe is unlimited, un ununderstood. So, so is ours. But we have the unconscious mind, the conscious mind, the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind works completely more billion times faster than the unconscious and the conscious mind. How do you make the sub subconscious mind work is by experiencing things. Whether you understand them at the first level, at the conscious level or the conscious level, it doesn't matter, but you've experienced it, it is stored. For example, you've gone to a party and you've seen people around the room, but everybody you don't know, but when you come back, one person in the room, you, somebody asks you, you remember that person being there because subconsciously, whether you knew the person or you did not know the person, you knew the person was there. It went into your subconscious mind by experience. So there are endless possibilities. What are the real frustrations? Of course, it's possible, it's possible, it's good news, it's great news, it's great news. But what is the bad news? The bad news is people have more psychological baggage than they can usually care to admit. Emotional pain is experienced during childhood later as an adult. Defensive barriers are erected by you to try to avoid areas of life that might repeat any painful experience. A childhood sense for adventure soon becomes replaced with the I can't because excuses. You learn to cope with disappointment. As years go by, an overall our new hardwire is... Would you please, uh, uh, may I request you all to please be on mute? So... So despite a clear understanding and knowledge, there is still a lot of self-awareness, going for help, having an accountability partner, having a mentor, having a coach. Uh, and therefore the real practice, what I ad ad adopt is cognitive behavioral techniques where we evaluate your thought processes and replace them with Neuroplasticity, like a plastic surgeon who puts positive behaviors, positive thoughts, positive actions, positive uh, languages to your brain through neuro linguistic programming, to and over and over and over repetition, it becomes a new wire, a new software is found till you realize the aha moment and the wow factor and the transformation is simple. And there is human revolution. And you go to a greater higher, you go to the top of worlds, you're in realization, you're in the world of realization, you impact the environment, the environment impacts their environment, and so on. It's a democratic, good, higher potential, um, high calibered human beings, true human beings, what are required now, if not now, when if not now if not us who the time is now let's combine forces and bring out the potential of every human being so democratically together we unite and bring a nation of absolute scholars stalwarts beyond and above 2020 and 21 beyond 2020 30 where we are had all the opportunities at our fingertips it's only uh, one step away, and we are the largest na democratic nation. We are going to surpass. The world is watching. Let's do it now. Thank you very much for listening to me. My name is Dr. Simi Gobin Kataria. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time.
Thank you, Dr. Simi. You have really uh, thrown the light on the right perspective. That self-realization, indeed, the one of the prime desire. Sometimes it becomes then primitive also, the dark side. And that dark side, if continues and it becomes a habitual activity, then, then self-realization is a soul, uh, one person's, uh, you may say, dream or concept, but it's not going to affect anybody in the community with positive results. So positive results, of course, a motto of democracy, because democracy means liberalization, libertinism. Absolutely. And if those uh, aspects are not achieved, then your self-realization is a failure. Absolutely. Uh, and we have to look at it for the micro level. We have to look at it at the micro level to make the macro level work. And it's baby steps, small steps, short term, mid term, long term, realistic goals, smart goals. We'll make it happen. We are there. We are getting there. We will be there. Uh, I would like to invite the next uh, speaker is uh, Surinder Singh Ji Dora. Are you there? Surinder Singh Ji Dogra, are you there? Raminisa? Raminisa, are you there? Okay. Uh, so I think our next young speaker is there, it seems visible on the screen. And uh, it is uh, Ashwarya. Ashwarya Singh? Yes, I'm, I'm here. All right, you can continue with your discourse. If other speakers would come in, then I will let them to uh, be there in the, after you. All right. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak at this online summit being organized by Bhopal Nobles University on the occasion of the International Day of Democracy. Uh, today, I'll be speaking on the citizen's constitution, making the constitution work for the people. Uh, since it's the International Day of Democracy, it would be apt to talk about what makes India a democracy. The foundation of democracy in India has been laid down under its constitution. One of the most important components of democracy is universal adult franchise. That is, every citizen, irrespective of their caste, creed, gender, social or economic status, has the right to vote. Although universal adult, adult franchise now appears to be an obvious feature of any democracy, its adoption in the Indian freedom movement and subsequently in our constitution was no less than a radical move. We adopted universal adult franchise even before many of the other Western liberal democracies. The adoption of the universal adult franchise reflects our history of colonization, where the indigenous population was deprived of having any say in, on how they are to be governed and by whom. Edward Said had noted that for the West, the East was considered unfit for democracy, since the people in the East belonged to a subject race and had to be subjected, which in other words meant that they were to be governed by the British Empire. Universal adult franchise was specifically denied to Indians during the British rule under Government of India Acts of 1919 and 1935. These acts laid down certain criteria which made people eligible to vote based on factors like income, property or education. As a consequence, only 3 to 10 percent of the Indian population could actually participate in the elections. One of the central planks of the anti-colonial movement towards the end of 1920s thus became the demand for self-government. The leaders of the Indian nationalist movement demanded Poon Swaraj, or complete freedom. They envisioned that Indians would be governed by their own constitution, which would provide for universal adult franchise. The Nehru report of 1928 provided that every person of either sex who has attained the age of 21 and is not disqualified by law shall be entitled to vote. It would be interesting to note that at this moment in many of the Western countries, uh, the first wave of feminism was going on where women were demanding the right to vote. 
but we were already there we were already talking about giving the right to vote irrespective of a person's gender the indian national congress passed a resolution in 1931 in its karachi session declaring that the constitution of india must contain a provision for universal adult suffrage the constituent assembly which although itself was indirectly elected by members of elected provincial legislatures according to the government of india acts which had those uh, specific criteria was in agreement that the principle of universal adult franchise should be made part of the constitution now the constituent assembly uh, may, w- was involved in the drafting of the india's cons- constitution for people who don't know about that however the adoption of universal adult franchise was not without debate in the assembly some of the members of the assembly argued that adult franchise should be contingent on certain levels of education patriotism or some other social economic factors these demands were finally rejected by the majority of the assembly krishna sharma one of the members of the assembly observed that adoption of universal adult franchise is the rejection of monarchy the nation will no longer be governed by the will of a single person or few people but by nation as a whole he stated that adult franchise gave meaning to and put into practice the opening lines of the constitution which is the preamble we the people give ourselves this constitution aladi krishna swami ayer on the other hand argued that adult franchise would promote education and enlightenment turning the argument over its head that educational qualification is required to vote he further argued that having property or educational qualifications as a criteria would disenfranchise most of the country's population he also pertinently pointed out that it is not necessary that only educated indians would make proper use of the vote after all we all know communitarian biases transcend education we are seeing that many of the democracies in the world are becoming illiberal and becoming illiberal has nothing to do with your education because many of the educated people in those countries are subscribing to illiberal views finally uh, the universal adult franchise found its way under article 326 of the constitution which provides that elections to the house of the people and to legisl- legislative assemblies of the states would be on the basis of adult franchise however the constitution does not envisage india as merely a formal democracy which holds ele- elections and provides for adult franchise but it envisages india as a country whose society is genuinely democratic a society which upholds liberty equality and justice the constitution provides a robust framework on protection of the rights of the individual lest they may be trampled upon by the society in its fundamental rights chapter it provides for the protection of the rights of minorities and disadvantaged sections it guarantees freedom of religion to every individual in this regard many have characterized the constitution as a transformative document which does not merely transfer power from the british to the native government but also seeks to radically change the society by eradicating oppressions based on caste gender and other marginalities the supreme court has expanded the groups that now have constitutional protection against discrimination which now include members of the lgbt community and persons with disability however the ideals and aspirations of the constitution would only remain paper tigers unless they are given life and meaning by people of india one of bhr ambedkar's oft quoted remark precisely captures the sentiment he says we must make our political democracy a social democracy as well political democracy cannot last unless there lies at its base social democracy what does social democracy mean it means a way of life which recognizes liberty equality and fraternity as principles of life after independence there's enough evidence to show that indians made the constitution their own the state often found itself entangled in litigation advanced by citizens which influenced its policies or even led to the change in policies people advocated their own interpretation of the constitution in court rooms and beyond social movements challenging state policies and legislations have often invoked the constitution as a rallying cry specifically its preamble constitution becomes a part of these movements in various ways through chanting of the preamble in streets distribution of the copies of the constitution and even in the form of poetry raps youtube videos and artwork there is no gain saying that it's the people's embrace of the constitution 
which breathes meaning to the words of the preamble. We, the people of India, do hereby adopt, enact, and give ourselves this constitution. Apart from social movements, another way in which the constitution has been invoked by the people before another pillar of the state, the judiciary, is through PIL or public interest litigation. Public interest litigation relaxes the requirement of local standi, that you no longer have to be the aggrieved party to bring up a grievance before the court. A public spirited person can file a case before the Supreme Court or High Court on behalf of a marginalized community or on the issue of public interest. But one may ask that why do we need people's movements when we already have elections where people elect their government? Democracy, if looked at in a reductive sense, is only a process of electing leaders. However, this process does not ensure that democratic ethos of deliberation, consultation, and equal participation are also upheld. An election does not guarantee that the state will allow state will allow democratic exchange of ideas, a free flow of ideas where people have the right to express their opinions, even if they do not conform to the majority's opinion. An election does not guarantee that people will not be stigmatized or discriminated against on account of their marginalized identities. Aristotle conscient an unchecked democracy pays way for popular passions to emerge, which is nothing but tyranny of the majority or majoritarianism. Thus, you have the constitution to typically mediate these passions. The rule of law acts as a counter against totalizing tendencies of the state, which is armed with the support of the majority. These tendencies are reflected in the actions of the executive, which try to restrict freedom of speech and expression, manipulate or suppress press, target political opponents or civilians who dissent and by oppression of the country's minorities. That is why you have the fundamental rights chapter to protect against these excesses of the executive and the legislature through the judiciary. But it is possible that the court may fail to uphold the rights of the people. As citizens of this constitutional democracy, it then falls on us to critique the actions of the state, of the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, to organize and demand the desired social and legal change. Further, the constitution does not solely belong to the judges or lawyers. It is the document of we the people. Irrespective of legal outcomes, people have a claim over its interpretation, interpretations, its aspirations, and its invocation. This people's movements advocating for their rights and entitlements are an evidence of people's engagement with the constitution and should be promoted and not suppressed. Thus, it is important to make the constitu constitution a citizen's constitution by infusing life into its words by recognizing its place in our lives and by making it work for the people of this country, each and every one of us. As Amu Swaminathan, member of the Constituent Assembly said, I think if we, if we are to deserve the constitution that we have, we have to make up our minds to work it into something alive and something that will be of benefit to every citizen of this country. Uh, thank you again for inviting me, the views that I have expressed are completely my own, and it was a pleasure to speak here. May I invite Professor Shara Shivasta? Sir, please have some inputs for the young aspirant. Uh, I'm sorry, I could not be a part of the, I could not listen to that because of uh, the entire, uh, you know, speech of, uh, Ashwarya Singh, and the last part I heard, uh, in fact, uh, it reverberated some of the ideas that uh, I made in the beginning. And uh, I'm glad that uh, the uh, uh, budding uh, lawyer uh, has is able to express herself so freely and frankly, and particularly in the kind of uh, atmosphere that we live today. So, congratulations to Ashwarya uh, Singh. Keep it up. And uh, I believe uh, you will have more of, uh, uh, you know, analytical approach to the issues comprehensively as you grow up. All the best. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I would like to congratulate. May I say a few words? Yes, ma'am. May, yes. may, may I congratulate the young a lawyer, she has exhaustively explained the citizen's constitution in a very good manner. 
we would like to wish her good luck for her future endurance but her command over the subject is excellent good luck beta god bless you thank you thank you thank you so much may i invite the next speaker uh, dr surinder singh ji dogra are you there online dr surinder singh ji dogra yes <clears throat> yes ma'am good evening i'm available here i am just join your program and uh, you have really chosen a very appropriate day to express our feelings uh because we are living in a country like india who is following democratic uh system of uh thought i'm really lucky born in india and i'm proud of proud of my country because my country given me uh, the liberty to express the feelings because i belong to a fraternity of media so if you have the right to express your uh, feelings your thought independently then we have more responsible towards our country our society if we have given the liberty to express our things our thoughts our vision we should utilize our this uh, authority or uh, freedom in a more better manner how see if we enjoy the freedom of our expression why not we utilize our thought vision and activities to strengthen our country and our countrymen i don't think such freedom is particularly given to the citizen even to criticize their country head like prime minister president but we have the freedom to express our feelings even the country head but at the same time we have to keep in our mind that they are being chosen or given the board and the power to come to that particular post hum hindustani hone ke nate hamara ye kartavya bhi banta hai कि हम अपने देश के प्रति कितनी निष्ठापूर्वक अपनी नागरिकता को साबित कर सकते हैं हम अपने तमाम गतिविधियों के माध्यम से हाउ कैन वी कंट्रीब्यूट टू आवर नेशन विद आवर ओन स्पेशलाइजेशन एंड कंट्रीब्यूशन हमें आलोचना करना बड़ा अच्छा लगता है लेकिन क्या कभी हमने ये सोचा है या कभी विचार किया है कि मैं अपने देश के लिए क्या कर सकता हूं ये बड़ा गंभीर विषय है और आज अंतर्राष्ट्रीय लोकतांत्रिक दिवस के उपलक्ष में आप लोगों ने जो ये आयोजन किया ये सच में बड़ा सराहनीय है लेकिन हमें इन लोकतांत्रिक अधिकारों और आजादी का सम्मान करना चाहिए हमें शपथ लेनी चाहिए कि हम इस आजादी का सदुपयोग करें ना कि दुरुपयोग करें बड़ा कई बार ऐसा महसूस होता है कि आप अगर कुछ गल्फ कंट्रीज को देखें वहां पर कितनी स्ट्रिकनेस है हम लोग तो सिर्फ देख और सुन पाते हैं या अखबारों में कुछ खबरें देखते हैं कि वहां किस तरह से कितना सीवियरली पनिशमेंट किया जाता है और अगर हमारे यहाँ कुछ मानवीय संवेदनाओं समझ लें या मानव अधिकारों की बात कर लें अगर हमारे यहाँ अगर इस तरह की फ्रीडम हमें मिली है हम उसका दुरुपयोग क्यों करें हम सदुपयोग क्यों ना करें 
जे एफ कैनेडी साहब ने एक बार अमेरिकन राष्ट्रपति ने बड़ा अच्छा कोट किया था कि हमारा देश हमारे लिए क्या कर सकता है उससे ज्यादा महत्वपूर्ण यह है कि हम अपने देश के विकास में क्या योगदान दे सकते हैं हमारे वर्तमान प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के व्यक्तित्व से मैं काफी प्रभावित हूं उससे पूर्व जो मैंने अपने जीवन में प्रधानमंत्री चाहे वो इंदिरा गांधी रही हूं एक ऐसा मात्र देश अमेरिका जैसे कंट्री जो कि वर्ल्ड की सबसे शक्तिमान कंट्री कहलाती है आज तक वहां महिला राष्ट्रपति नहीं हुई हमारे यहां प्रधानमंत्री भी और राष्ट्रपिता महिम महामहिम प्रतिभा सिंह जो है वो उस ऊंचे पद तक गई इससे बढ़िया और उदाहरण क्या हो सकता है विश्व पटल पर कि हमारे यहां महिलाओं को चाहे हमारे धार्मिक ग्रंथों की बात कहें या समाज में सम्मान देने की बात कहें और राजनीतिक क्षेत्र की बात कहें और अब अगर आप खेलों की दुनिया पर नजर डालें तो महिलाएं किसी से कमतर नहीं है लेकिन एक गंभीर विचार जो हमेशा मन में आता है वो ये है कि इन तमाम चीजों को ध्यान में रखते हुए भी अगर हम समय से इन आजादी को पिचहत्तर के पिचहत्तरवें वर्ष अवश्य मना रहे हैं क्या सच में हम आजाद हुए हैं हमने कभी अपनी जो धरोहर है हमारे पुरानी ऐसी परंपराएं रही हैं चाहे वो सामाजिक परिवेश हो या स्वास्थ्य संबंधी हमारी आयुर्वेदा क्या हमने सच में इसकी कदर की है दादी नानी के नुस्खे आज कोरोना काल में हम जब लोग सब घरों में कैद थे हमारी पुरानी परंपराओं के ऊपर लोगों ने काफी सराहनीय कार्य किए मैं इस मंच पे कोई एलोपैथ को कोई आलोचना करने की बात नहीं कर रहा ये जो आज आपने कार्यक्रम रखा है कि अगर हमें ईश्वर ने दो आंखें दो कान और एक मुख दिया है तो कुछ तो वजह होगी यानी कि हमें देखने की सुनने की शक्ति और समझने की शक्ति मिली है इसीलिए मानव को सर्वोत्तम प्राणी माना जाता है पृथ्वी पर मुख एक दिया है और अगर हमें आजादी मिली है लोकतांत्रिक परिवेश में उसका हमें सम्मान करते हुए अपने समाज देश के प्रति भी जिम्मेदारी पूर्ण रवैया हमें अपने जीवन में अपनाना होगा हमारे देश का भले ही कितना बड़ा संविधान लिखा गया हो कितनी बड़ी विकसित देश हैं जिनके संविधान बहुत बड़े नहीं हैं हमारे यहां वैवाहिक संबंध की बात की जाए हमारे यहां कोई पंजीकृत विवाह नहीं होते पूरी जिंदगी भर निभाए जाते हैं मैं अगेन फिर कंपैरिजन इसलिए कर रहा हूं मैं आलोचना नहीं कर रहा आप यूरोपियन गोरों को देख सकते हैं उनके यहां पंजीकृत विवाह होते हैं और एक जीवन में कितने विवाह होते हैं ये उनकी चीजों का आप खुद तुलनात्मक चीजें देख सकते हैं तो आज ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ दिस इंटरनेशनल डेमोक्रेटिक डे माय मैसेज to all the participants and honorable management and organizer and host this is my own ideas my thoughts and my my vision ki hame hamare dil dimag aur zuban ko talmel se in teenon ke talmel se hame 
अपने अपने कर्तव्य निभाने होंगे तभी हम जस्टिफाई कर पाएंगे वेदर वी आर रियली डेमोक्रेटिक सिटीजन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड दिस इज ऑल आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू शेयर विद यू थैंक यू जय श्री मैम एंड भोपाल नवल्स यूनिवर्सिटी एंड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु सो एवर आर प्रेजेंट इन दिस वेबिनार थैंक यू हैव ए नाइस डे बहुत 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 धन्यवाद सर आपके अपनी शब्दों में जो मन के शब्द हैं जो आज के 14 सितंबर के दिन सचमुच में प्रकट होने थे आज हिंदी दिवस है अंतर्राष्ट्रीय लेवल पे बनाया जाता है और हम आपके बहुत आभारी हैं कि आपने अपने कर्तव्य को बिल्कुल वफादारी से निभाया और हमारे समक्ष अपने विचार प्रकट किए थैंक यू सर मे आई इनवाइट प्रोफेसर शरद एंड डॉक्टर विजय लक्ष्मी मैम बिकॉज वट एवर ही स्पोक इट वॉज ऑफ योर इंटरेस्ट समवेयर ऑन इमोशनल क्वेश्चन ही वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट विच इज टू बी वेरी मच बैलेंस्ड मे आई इनवाइट प्रोफेसर विजय लक्ष्मी मैम आई यू देयर जस आई एम देयर Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Are you yes, able to hear me? <coughs> Just I want to say that it was an excellent effort by the BN University and Dr. Jashwi Singh for celebrating the today's day that the uh, uh, WHO's International Day uh, for Democracy. India has already completed seventy-five years of democracy. and i endorse all the views expressed by professor sharad shrivastav he has talked about all the challenges and all these things but still the things are very uh, very confused in the democracy presently we talk about democracy but as far as the voting behavior is concerned still it is sold out because professor sharad has already given the things that good people are not coming in the field of politics so at today's day i would like to submit that those who are having the aptitude for the political mentality they should come forward to for the leadership because the constitution as ashwarya has talked about constitution is having all those positivities all the speakers have talked about the positivities but the need is to our is to come the good people in this field so that we can fully enjoy the democracy democracy is by the people for the people but still we are not enjoying those fruits we are utilizing negatively so my submission is if we want to enjoy the democracy constitution has given so much of rights every right has been given but our self concept is so weak professor kataria has talked about the psychological capital and it is true that as, since we are not equipped with the openness we are not equipped with the equipped with the our self identity we are still behaving for others satisfaction so my submission is at the eve of demo, today's day the celebration is that realize ourselves the self realization will help us to uphold the values of the democracy because the values are so high but the time after the 75 years of democracy india is facing lot of problems and sometimes people says that we have failed the democracy has failed because people are misutilizing this morally value culturally this is a very sound constitution but still the people those who are in the field of politics they are not putting their efforts to come out with a honesty that is my submission thank you for giving me the chance but professor sarash shivastha has totally given a very good challenges of democracy and uh, it is good that the educational awareness is there gender equality is there yes we are talking about gender equality but still only they are getting them they are selected they are chosen but who is working behind them is this a democracy no still the women has to equip for her self respect self identity and self awareness then only we can enjoy the fruits of the equality thank you so much for giving me the chance to speak few two words few words thank you jashri and congratulations to the all the organizing members of the bn university and we wish you many more things to come out from the university that will enhance the value of university thank you so much
thank you ma'am for coming in and supporting us for being regularly there for us may i call sharad shivastav sir sir do you have any thing to say to prophet i have Dr. only sir? one thing to say that it's pleasant surprise to see professor vijay lakshmi chauhan uh, though online uh, it is heartening to see her and in good health and uh, looking cheerful uh, all my wishes for uh, uh you know staying safe i always say during this pandemic times my message to all everybody has been stay safe stay healthy and feel good so this is my message to my uh, you know colleague uh, and friend uh, professor vijay lakshmi johan uh, and, and to all the participants and uh, uh, to all the organizers my congratulations for organizing this uh, beautiful webinar on this important day of Uh, international democracy day and i wish that uh, we continue to practice uh, democracy and democratic behavior in our day to day lives also that is the last message i wish to give thank you so much <clears throat> thank you sir we are grateful for your help and the uh, advice and everything uh, i just want to uh, invite uh, kamal singh rathod pro to president uh, bhopal nobles university who is behind all this uh, frame to organize webinars uh, and especially to celebrate this day professor Kam uh, kamal singh ji are you there kamal singh ji kamal singh rathor yes ma'am i am here yes yes i am here yes <laughs> am i audible ma'am yes sir you, you are audible sir okay thank you so much uh this was really a wonderful uh, session on uh, international day of uh, democracy and uh, the lead uh, taken by uh, jayshri ma'am uh, uh from uh, not only in, uh, from udaipur but uh, from all over india different parts of india i'm really so much thankful uh, to professor sharad srivastava sir uh, dr jay lakshmi ma'am and uh, aishwarya singh ma'am prema priyadarshini madam and uh, dr uh, pranjal kumar uh, uh, from assam and uh, professor simi karya ma'am from uh, mumbai and uh, dr uh, ss dongra sir from uh, delhi and uh, many other speakers who could not uh, uh, join because of some problems or networking but we are again thankful uh, for them also uh, professor ujwal choudhry sir and uh, uh, saroj vyas uh, ma'am uh, really it was wonderful and i also learned many things although i am from another field but uh, many things i come to know that right to choose and uh, right to speak up right to build together the world is uh, we want this is uh, we can say democracy and as a biggest india is one of the big, uh, biggest democracy in the world and at present the theme is also uh, related with uh, this covid 19 as uh, spotlight to democracy and uh, you will be very happy that india is number one in the, uh, procuring uh, this vaccines to the masses we we crosses more than um, 100 crore doses to the world so this is we uh, can say biggest democracy and uh, biggest uh, celebration for this as un also speak on this day that let us uh, commit to a future in which we recognize human rights and uh, rule of the uh, law or uh, is fundamental to democracy and also we must uh, also find uh, the the message in the uh, in the quotation from the jf kennedy the former uh, us president and uh, uh, speaker one speaker also uh, told about this don't ask what your country uh, do for you but you must ask what you can, you did for your country so uh, i really enjoyed this session and i am very much thankful on the behalf of uh, bn university i am thankful to our uh, chairperson sir president sir and uh, registrar sir and our bn sansthan um, for this uh, uh, international day of democracy they give uh, give us uh, the freedom to celebrate uh, this uh, whatever day is coming so we are try to celebrating each and every day uh, from our side so once again uh, 
national awareness uh, on this day i congratulate each and every uh, attendee of this uh, very informative from the erudite personalities uh, we, uh, we we benefited from them from their deliberations thank you so much and thank you renu ma'am also uh, from the department uh, of science and uh, she is the dean and uh, thank you so much once again to uh, dr jayashree ma'am uh, for all this uh, pen she taken and uh, only uh, she has two three days with her and uh, she arranged so nicely with so many uh, nice speakers and uh, very uh, celebrities you can say in their field i'm very much thankful thank you so much ma'am and thank you everyone for joining this session thank you so much so we are all uh, going to uh, wind, uh, get back to our own uh, house and hearth and we would be celebrating this day with our own new thoughts that whatever we have gathered here and thank you for being here and celebrating and enjoying this day thank you